Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Saturday morning to you all. Hope you folks are doing well out there this morning and waking up and feeling fantastic and having a great start to your Saturday and a great start to your weekend. I know I am. I'm feeling pretty good. Got up this morning a little extra early uh, compared to what I normally do on a Saturday morning. Got me a walk in. It was just uh, nice and peaceful. You just realize uh, when when things are, are quiet out there before everybody wakes up, how blessed you are and how, how good God is, that's for sure. So, uh, but anyways, moving past all that, here to discuss the weather, we're going to break it down for you folks. Um, we do have a flooding risk uh, today across areas of the southern tier of the country, even a severe weather threat. We even got some snow flying around out there in portions of like northeast Colorado. Uh, you guys will have to let me know if you're tuning in from like northwest Kansas, if you're seeing any snow, uh, southwestern uh, Nebraska. So interesting morning uh, for mid to late uh, April standards for sure for you guys. And uh, like I said, we are going to have a severe weather risk uh, for today also. In fact, we got a severe warm storm right at this moment uh, just outside of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So we will speak on who will have an opportunity to see more strong and severe storms throughout the day and afternoon evening hours as a cold front is a big player in today's weather as it continues to kind of stall out or just ever so slightly sag to the south. Um, but we'll break it all down for you folks. After we discuss today's forecast, we will jump ahead and start to discuss and break down a storm system I am watching for next week. This is yet again going to bring another multi-day threat of severe weather for especially the middle of the country. But this could tweak to the east some for sure as we get kind of about a week out from today. So uh, we're going to discuss what we know. As as you guys know, when we're about you know four, five, six days out, we talk about just your main factors, kinematic wise, your winds aloft and at the surface, and thermodynamic wise, you know, your surface temperature, surface moisture, cape levels, lapse rates, all those things that drive severe weather. So we don't get super detailed. We just talk about what we know and the general risk area we need to try to figure out and fine tune as we get a little bit closer. So if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. If anybody has anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, you guys know the deal. Put those in the comments below. Let's get rocking and rolling. So we're dealing with another rainy morning in the Northeast. It just seems like that, you know, four out of seven days of a week or five out of seven days of a week, you know, you're dealing with some sort of rainy or dreary start. You know, this morning's no different as you continue to have moisture surging up the I-95 corridor, quite literally, this is starting to head into like New Brunswick, you know, Nova Scotia will start to get some of this a little bit later today. And then after this main area kind of pulls through, you, you will get more of just kind of a splotchy, isolated, scattered feed. And we'll talk about that here in a second. Our deal we are dealing with some storms like out in the southern Outer Banks region, some scattered downpours out here in eastern North Carolina, a little string of rain kind of surging through the state of Tennessee, and the further west you work in the southern tier of the country, you know, the more widespread rain and storms you're seeing. We do have this huge complex of storms kind of making their way through northern Texas, even southern sections of Oklahoma, some spotty downpours and storms in Arkansas and Louisiana. And then there's that snow I mentioned right here in this region of the southern high plains, central high plains, and, uh, you know, picking up a little bit of wet snow out there for your uh, mid um, to late April uh, morning, April the 20th. Uh, pretty wild. Ten days away from May. And, you know, is it totally uncommon? You see it sometimes. Uh, but, you know, certainly seeing some snow flying around there. Then we got more of just uh, lower pressure up here in the Great Lakes. So just kind of splotchy and scattered and smothered Waffle House sounds fantastic right now. Moisture across the Great Lakes region. The western U.S. pretty quiet as a ridge will kind of move in, already is, and uh, will scoot across the entirety of the country over the next several days. Watches, warnings, and advisories. You know, it's starting to get deep enough in the season now where you are getting freeze warnings issued pretty far north. It really tells you you're starting to get a little bit closer to late spring, summer, and we are getting freeze warnings up here in this dark purple color, uh, frost advisories in this blight blue color, some dense fog advisories, and we do have some high wind warnings in the uh, northern Rockies here in Montana where some high winds will, you know, certainly get going this weekend for sure. Excessive rainfall outlook. So this is one of the bigger stories just for today. We do have that slight rest stretching from west central Texas through the heart of Texas, um, through eastern Texas, and through northern Louisiana, southern Arkansas, all the way through basically the central portions of Mississippi, very small section of western Alabama. This slight means you have at least a 15% chance of rainfall exceeding 
flash flood guidance within 25 miles of any given point. Okay, so be mindful of that, and we'll kind of zoom into that here in a second. Um, as far as the Storm Prediction Center, we got to watch for some storms south of this main push of moisture here in southern and central Texas. I'm talking about like Waco to Austin, Houston, San Antonio, San Angelo down to Corpus Christi. This has broadened a little bit since we discussed this yesterday. And then we do have this area to watch out for. For some strong to severe storms in this dark green, I would not be surprised if this gets pulled a little bit further north in the southeast North Carolina, including more South Carolina, just looking at some of the short range model guidance, I'll talk to you about why I think that might be the case later on today. We had a couple of nasty storms in South Carolina yesterday that produced some strong winds and some hail. We could get that again as this cold front boundary is sagging south and anybody along and south of the boundary will have an opportunity for storms uh, for today, you know, pretty much anywhere in the south. So. Uh, what is this driven off of? We do have a 2% risk of a tornado down here in South Texas, but everybody else below 2%. And then just your standard wind, 5% wind, and then 5% hail is more so for Texas uh, threat for today's severe weather risk. So let's go on and break down to Southeast. We'll take that broad look at things like we always do and just kind of take a look at the bigger picture. We get into about lunchtime, not a whole lot going on. Some rains moving into Arkansas. Then as we start to get into this afternoon, that boundary is probably right into here. And we're getting some storms south of that boundary that will re-get going, maybe a supercell or two. I think the tornado risk is really a huge thing to worry about, but you never can rule it out. But uh, we'll get some strong storms probably in the Sand Hills, southeastern sections, coastal plains of, of North Carolina. Um, and then we'll start to get into around, I mean, it's around 6, 7 p.m. Look at these storms along the Gulf Coast line. We're just uh, inland of it. Some scattered moisture here in central Mississippi, Alabama. But look at these big storms and kind of the PD, upstate of South Carolina, southeast North Carolina. Uh, these could pack a punch, you know, from uh, Chesterfield down to Florence, up to Fayetteville, all the way down to Wilmington. Some big storms are possible, and then we start to get into the evening hours, and more widespread rains into the overnight hours begin to kind of take over the western areas of the Deep South. Some some storms are possible in central Alabama, central uh, Mississippi, ahead of this main batch of rain. And um, as we are working our way into the wee hours of the morning, rain just continue to take over. And by the time you're waking up for your Sunday morning, we got some scattered rains across the Carolinas, more widespread rains. Um, across Mississippi, Alabama, and North Georgia, all the way into the southern Cumberland Plateau, and maybe some bigger storms kind of to the south. But this is kind of more of a southerly trap because you got this boundary, the jets sagging south. So this is more of like, a, you know, a track for like a winter storm in winter. But of course, you have no cold air um, and all those things you need that seem like they never happen for the southeast anymore. But anyways, not going to be talking about all the being bummed out about winter anymore. We're moving past the winter of 2023-2024. Uh, but a little bit closer look at all this, guys, you know, for my folks here in the Deep South. Um, there's those storms firing up kind of south of Hattiesburg, you know, north of Gulfport, but it might be right on top of you guys. Some scattered showers and storms up here in central Mississippi. This is getting to about 8 p.m. You know, you continue to see these scattered downpours down here. And uh, by the time you get to closer to midnight, Still continuing to see some storms, you know, it might be affecting the Auburn area, Columbus, maybe up to Atlanta, you know, uh, Birmingham, you know, down to Montgomery. And then you see just the widespread more showers, heavy rain and storms starting to take over Louisiana into the late evening, overnight hours. And we're definitely this is like three o'clock in the morning, some heavy rains making their way through um, areas of Louisiana, Mississippi. And by the time, like I said, you get into tomorrow morning, this is really taking over Alabama. And then yes that is some snow there's been some chatter about this right in the um let's see if we can look at this there's been some chatter about this and in fact you know what let's just go on and before we jump ahead let's continue talking about the deep south rains between now and sunday morning all right scattered one to three inch uh rainfall amounts from shreveport to jackson lessens up a little bit but you know you take this all the way out to like monday morning and Still, it looks like the rain kind of is not as significant for like Alabama and Georgia, but certainly enough rain to, uh, you know, create some puddles out there and certainly wash some pollen away. We are starting to move a little bit further away from that actually visible yellow pollen season here in the deep south. That's typically more of a uh, March um, and early April thing, but you're still seeing it out there for sure Something in some places. 
I don't know if I can't speak for everybody in the deep south, but typically they like the yellow pollen, which I'm not a pollen expert on what creates this kind of pollen or whatever. But typically the yellow pollen is like a two week thing here in South Carolina. Um, and then it kind of dramatically stops. Um, but anyways, uh, the Carolinas, and we will speak a little bit about that blue you just saw on your screen. The Carolinas this morning, you know, HRR model not doing great at, you know, depicting what's actually falling here in eastern North Carolina where we are getting some storms. But as we are getting into this afternoon, there's that big storm fires up right on top of Fayetteville. Might, you know, it's just one run of the HRR model. And then we start to get into later this afternoon, more so around lunch. I'm sorry, dinner time. Uh, look at this big storm kind of north of the Columbia area. Some big storms near Fayetteville. And I was like, there's an airplane right on top of my house right now. Sheesh. Um, but uh, you got some storms, you know, along the southern coastlines, more so of North Carolina. But they're very isolated, as you can tell, just like they were yesterday. You know, we get into this evening, some big storms. Uh, could just ride through the PD all the way down to Wilmington, North Carolina. And then we start to, you know, more so get into the overnight hours. Then kind of maybe one round of more widespread heavy rain moves in out of Georgia into South Carolina. So this is for your Sunday morning waking up. But check this out. You know, th the cold front will be sagged all the way to the south at this point. Look at this snow you're seeing as you're getting into Sunday morning and the Smokies. Even some of the higher peaks like uh, west of Asheville, you know, some higher elevated regions, Mount Mitchell. And I mean, you can see the blue as clear as day on the screen. Some wet snow is certainly likely in those higher peaks. I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to just take a shot here, probably favoring areas over 4,000 feet up in the air. But I mean, this is some heavy rain that kind of moves in a very cold, dreary day. And then this heads on out. But, you know, you look at the... National Weather Service forecast for this. Um, and they're not buying it. They're not buying it at all. They're not even calling for any snow up there. So we'll see what happens. Uh, the Northeast uh, for today, um, you know, you're dealing with those rains this morning along the I-95 corridor. You'll continue to deal with rains all the way through early afternoon down to the down east areas of Maine or up to the down east areas of Maine. <clears throat> After that, more of kind of just a scattered and isolated to scatter kind of a push of moisture removing. You could get some thunderstorms down here in southeast Mass, southern New England, Rhode Island, maybe this evening around dinner time. Um, enough cold air is oozing behind. Some of this will be in the form of some snow showers this evening in the Adirondacks, Green and White Mountains, and uh, maybe a heavier burst of rain along the southeastern portions of Maine. And then we keep this going. We get into the overnight hours all the way to tomorrow morning, waking up to some snow flurries. Very possible, <clears throat> maybe in like the Tuck Hill Plateau. Maybe even some snow flurries kind of around here in southeastern, I'm sorry, southwestern New York, northwestern PA. And I mean, it's even showing, showing some flurries down here in Ohio. We'll see if that happens. So, uh, But, you know, a little bit of rain wind up, no more than a half an inch in areas for sure. So, you know, the, the areas of the, the south central U.S., the HRR model is not doing the best at picking up what's going on right now. It really isn't. But you are dealing with those snows up here, those snows. Um, the snow up here in Nebraska, Kansas, and uh, northeastern sections of Colorado. I do think that'll taper off by the time we get into later this afternoon, but we'll add another, uh, you know, additional couple inches of snow. Um, but, you know, as we're getting to this afternoon, you see these widespread uh, rain showing up here in northern Texas, even southern Oklahoma. What I want you to look at is down here to the south where you have more of an open sector. You don't have a lot of rain kind of stabilizing the atmosphere. Down here, you can get some big thunderstorms from San Angelo, you know, Austin, San Antonio, uh, maybe all the way down to Houston eventually. But, you know, this kind of groups up into a pretty nasty looking line of storms by the time you get into this evening. And then in terms of just more so widespread and embedded thunderstorms as it heads into Louisiana. But you're continuing to get some pretty big storms down here. I wouldn't be surprised they put it like a slight risk somewhere in southern Texas. Won't be surprised one bit, but then this moves on out and kind of gets into the deep south, what we've already discussed. A little bit closer look at Texas here. Like I said, the HRR model is not doing that great on what's happening right now, but there's those areas of heavy rain in western Texas that gets going, and the terms are just kind of a line of storms, more so heavy rain embedded storms up here in northern Texas. Down here, this is where we had the more severe element of storms. Like I said, here's a storm right here in this region. Down here, some big storms and the hill country of uh, Texas, and you kind of keep this going. You could even have an embedded spin up on the southern flank of these storms. You cannot rule out that tornado threat as kind of everything down here is prime for thunderstorms, kind of feeding into this 
southern flank of these storms, if you will. And uh, these keep going. And by the time you get in like to the overnight hours after midnight, you know, you still could be dealing with some storms. But I think for the most part, things begin to simmer down for the most part as you're greeted to your Sunday morning. Rainfall between now and Sunday morning, though, where you do have that slight risk of uh, flooding, you know, certain areas and kind of east central and southeastern Texas, you know, two, three, three and a half inches of rain is very possible in these areas. So be mindful of that. A lot of rain could fall fast um, as we are getting into our late morning, afternoon, evening hours here in eastern Texas. But moving to the north central U.S., of course, you know, we got that snow falling out here. You know, we're starting to get some snow showers up here in the U.P. of Michigan. Steven, you'll have to let me know. I know you live up here. Let me know what you're seeing out here, man. I would love to know, you know, some uh, April, uh, mid to late April snow showers flying around the UP. I know I got a, a couple other viewers too from the UP and Michigan that tune in. Let me know what you see up here today. Um, but you know, winter always hangs on a little bit longer, a lot longer up here compared to the rest of the country. But you start to get to the afternoon hours. These look to be more so in the eastern areas of the UP. Some snow showers, rain showers could drift into northern lower Michigan. Maybe some flurries in central Wisconsin, very possible. You know, we get into this evening overnight hours all the way into tomorrow morning just kind of waking up to a chilly morning uh, i think the moisture for the most part as this kind of area of lower pressure kind of scoots to the east is pretty much cut off and done so waking up to a very quiet sunday morning but you could get a dusting of snow certainly possible up here over the next several hours in the up of michigan so we can't rule that out at all um but uh, moving into the western u.s pretty quiet morning really not a whole lot to speak on we get into this afternoon uh, those snow showers and light snow will begin to kind of fade out here in Nebraska we'll get some rain showers in the Pacific Northwest for sure you know a little bit of rain will add up maybe in the higher elevations way up in the Olympic Mountains you could definitely pick up a couple inches of snow maybe more uh, but the rest, the southwest, very quiet. You're being dominated by this ridge, really moving in, bringing and pumping in some very warm temperatures. And uh, But, you know, this system up here this evening will bring some, you know, cascade snow, lower elevation rain uh, for uh, Seattle and surrounding areas. And then by the time you're getting into your Sunday morning, this will fizzle out for the most part. And this system is more so confined just way up here in the Pacific Northwest because... Uh, basically, the jet is way up here now because you got this ridge in place. No, not a whole lot going on out west, really. Uh, but temperatures today, um, the, you know, the entire central and eastern U.S. has cooled off for the most part. The only area that's hanging on to summer light warmth for dear life is anybody ahead of this cold front boundary. So, you know, temperatures will, will warm up pretty nice all the way up to NYC, Long Island, 60s, maybe some 70s. Uh, Delmarva 60s, some some 70s are possible. You start to ooze into the Carolinas, you know, more so 70s and 80s. I think South Carolina, the Georgia, the Florida will be kind of the warmest states unless you live in northwestern Georgia where the cold front moves in. But it'll be another warm, muggy day in South Carolina. Yesterday really felt like early summer here in South Carolina. Uh, but, you know, Texas is a weird state where, you know, the southern half of the state, 80s, okay, 80s, um, and even some low 90s, and then the, northern, uh, the northern sections of Texas, even in out in west central and western sections of Texas, just 40s and 50s for highs. But you notice the southern flank of that boundary getting into the 80s. You know, you get up here in the deep south, the Mississippi River uh, Valley region, just 60s, and even cooler air, very cool start to your weekend in the Ohio Valley, um, the Great Lakes region, just 30s, 40s, and 50s, depending on your a location but yet on out here to the west you can see this ridge so you notice how you got this big warmth up here just immediately confined to the western u.s and kind of the western side of the rockies if you will this is the pattern that's going to scoot uh to the east and really warm up everybody who's quite chilly this morning look at this pocket of really cold air where it is snowing uh, this morning but you know temperatures are starting to get downright hot down here in the southwest very nice and warm and comfortable in the valley regions of california pretty much everybody is warming up you know you might looks like you're going to get into the 80s and um, las vegas nice day along the big cities of the california coastline so all right moving past all this so i'll kind of skip a day and move to monday uh, for my folks in florida there is a threat of severe weather you got a marginal risk so we'll talk about that as we get a little bit closer all we know is that there's a 5% risk of severe weather. 
um, down here. But, um, you know, some thunderstorms had the potential to return over the middle of the country, too. But outside of that, Monday won't be a big deal. I started getting to Tuesday. I don't expect Tuesday to be a big deal either. Potential too low. Um, we're starting to get into day five now. Okay, this is when our feature that's going to bring a multi-day severe weather risk starts to enter the picture out west. This is predictability too low. I think Wednesday we will have some thunderstorms. We'll show that here in a second. And then we start to get into day six. We have a slight we have a, a slight risk for day six right here in the middle of the country, the southern and central plains. A 15% risk of severe weather within 25 miles in a given location includes almost all the way up to the Kansas, Nebraska state line, Wichita, Woodward, Oklahoma City, down to Wichita Falls, almost all the way down to Abilene, Texas. So right now, we just know that there's an upper trough that's going to swing in and then eventually eject across the middle of the country. And this is going to bring ingredients for severe weather right here. But look, day seven, this is different. Now we have an area displaced more so to the north and northeast. This includes areas of the Midwest, seal sections of the plains, northern Mississippi Valley region, and uh, yeah, it includes, I mean, portions of Iowa, western Illinois, uh, 60 to 70 percent of Missouri here, um, down to Springfield, Wichita again, Tulsa, down to Oklahoma City again. Okay, same deal. Day seven, this is for Friday. The, 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 the last frame I just showed you is for Thursday. This is for Literally Friday, six days from now, slight risk of severe weather, 15% risk of severe weather. So what is this driven off of? Well, let's talk about the pattern as a whole. So we'll wake up, we'll start this off for tomorrow morning. This big area of lower pressure over the area, cold front has at this point swept through. We have energy kind of sweeping to the south of this upper trough that you see here. So think of this blue area as lower pressure, and then this area right in here as higher pressure. Warmer than average temperature is typically associated with this. Uh, you know, typically some sort of system, storminess, and below average temperatures associated with this. So you notice I showed you that rain for the Pacific Northwest just a second ago. That is because of this area of lower pressure kind of bringing some energy to that region. So that's a good example. But you notice, remember I just showed you the western and southwestern U.S. very warm? Well, that's because this ridge is nosing in. So, you know, just a great example when you compare to what you're seeing right here, which is a little bit more confusing, and actual air temperatures, which is a lot less confusing because it shows numbers and everything for you. So, you know, Saturday afternoon, um, there's this energy swinging in. You see this in area of lower pressure right here. And, of course, that's why we are going to get the showers and storms and uh, maybe even some higher elevation southern apps snow tomorrow because this area of lower pressure bringing cooler air. So, this will last a couple days. This will keep the eastern U.S. having a pretty chilly start to your week. But if you notice, you got energy flying to the north. You know, I don't. I think this will bring that risk of some thunderstorms across this portion of the country, right in here, which is why you had that general risk of thunderstorms for Monday. It's because this upper trough swinging into the north. But watch what happens. Let's go on to the skip ahead. Ridge really begins to take over and kind of nose its way in across the southern tier of the country. The only area where I think it's going to remain cool this week is like the northern tier of the country, the Great Lakes regions, because you got this energy sweeping in. And then eventually this will swing in into the northeastern U.S., and this will bring a little bit of unsettled weather and just cooler temperatures. But this is when the dominant ridge moves in right here. This is a moving ridge. This isn't one of those anchored-in ridges that brings just, uh, just a huge long duration of warmer-than-average temperatures. You see this huge ridge buckling to the north. This is bringing pretty much, like I said, above average temperatures with, with anybody around it, you know, under it, and just associated with it. Continues to scoot across the middle of the country, dramatically warming your temperatures by the middle to a uh, later portion of this week. And then this ridge situates itself all the way up into Canada, all the way down to the south, and bringing a lot of warmer than average temperatures. But let's back this up a little bit. What I want you to notice here, Ridge built over the middle of the country. See this lower pressure here coming off the coast of California and the Pacific? This is our player that's going to bring severe weather. So we start to get into Thursday afternoon. We're already getting energy most likely somewhere into here. This will probably bring in some form of storms into here. Now, a GFS, European disagree, which we expect, expect them to at this range. But, um, you know, you get into Thursday, and we'll take a look at Thursday's risk. There is a threat of severe weather for Thursday. 
You know, this is for Thursday. But, you know, you would look at this and you would think, you know, for that 15% risk area to play out, you would need this area of lower pressure a little bit closer. And if we kind of compare this with the GFS and what it shows, it certainly is closer. You see the big difference here? Like this is the GFS around Thursday evening. You have this embedded little upper trough right here a lot further east, like over the Rockies. You compare this to the European it backs it up substantially to the west. It's much slower. So there's disagreement. So if something like the euro plays out, I wouldn't expect Thursday to be a big deal. Um, but let's just keep it on the European. Just want to show you the differences there. And as we are starting to get into Friday, this kind of embedded area of lower pressure ejects. This would bring probably some sort of form of severe weather Friday across the plains the midwest you see this kind of area darker blue that's energy ejecting across the plains but check out this huge other area that's kind of digging down into the southwest this looks more of a substantial threat but it really isn't it, it really isn't highlighted on the storm prediction center like this is getting past seven days it's starting to get into that range where things just you know aren't accurate this is getting into like literally a week from right now you got a much more substantial upper trough that digs in. And if something like this was to happen, you could have a bigger severe weather threat as you're getting to the last couple days of April compared to what we're going to see this week. So don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. We need to just figure out what's going to happen for, you know, at the end of this week. But what we do know is, is if we look at, you know, all the ingredients on the table, we look at Tuesday. Let's start off Tuesday. What we do know is the moisture is already starting to build. Like you get in the Tuesday afternoon, you're starting to get that low level, those low level dew points um, in the 50s and 60s already building ahead of this energy that's going to move on shore. And then we start to get into our Wednesday, same deal. This uh, moist sector becomes deeper, more moist and broadens and you're starting to get dew points all the way up into Oklahoma reaching the 60s. And then we are starting to get into our Thursday, which could bring severe weather. And we're getting dew points, guys, all the way into the 60s, all the way into the southern sections of um, Nebraska. Okay, deep moisture down here in Oklahoma and Texas. Dew points into the 70s, which if you're thinking, Mitch, I don't, I don't know the difference between dew points in the 60s or, or 50s or whatever. Once you start to get dew points in the 60s, that's really a good criteria for severe weather when it comes to surface moisture. That's when you can really start to feel the juice in the air, the humidity. But of course, once you get into Friday, um, much more substantial um, south to north uh, extension of the moist sector. You got dew points all the way into the 60s on the Euro. All the way, I'm sorry, this is Friday. I think I said Friday. All the way into southern Minnesota. I mean, extending all the way into the Midwest for sure. So a much more substantial moisture uh, pool. But I want, what I want you to notice here is as we're getting into Saturday, um, the, moist sec the moist sector really just immediately recovers because you have another huge area of lower pressure that moves in that we just talked about for Saturday and the Sunday. And all this moist air continues to just hang out here. And we could, we could, we could, don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, have more of a substantial severe weather threat as we get into the next weekend. So those are dew points. Of course, you compare the Cape levels. Already Wednesday afternoon, Cape levels spiking over 2,000 joules, joules per kilogram. But do you have lift for thunderstorms? Are you going to actually even have any thunderstorm development? You can have energy all day, but are you actually going to have the updrafts that get going? You get in a Thursday, and this does look like your typical dry line setup. You go from no cape to a dramatic amount of cape, you know, 3,000 joules per kilogram, but are you going to have any storms that get going? You know, this same thing happened last Monday. You know, you, you had energy in the atmosphere, but you, you didn't really have the initiation of storms. So, you know, energy shooting up, and then we start to get into Friday, Energy shoots up even, you know, further north. You know, we get this this pretty, I would say, pretty wide area of Cape levels, well over 2,000, 2,500 joules per kilogram. A lot of energy in the atmosphere extending. And then, check it out. We start to get into Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening. This just revamps down here in Texas as another system moves in. And then we have to watch more severe weather across, more severe weather opportunities across uh, the south central u.s the southern plains as we are getting into next weekend it could be driven off a totally different system or these systems could kind of come together the last thing you kind of look at here is the kinematics the mid-level flow that causes those lift for thunderstorms and wind energy for thunderstorms so as we're starting to get into uh you know thursday morning 
you're starting to see, you know, that 30, 40 knot mid-level jet starting to get into the plains and get east of the Rockies. But really, as we start to get the Thursday afternoon, um, you're starting to get more lift for thunderstorms, but not a whole lot. Not a whole lot at all. Here's the main energy and that main mid-level jet right into here. You really need this position here to get thunderstorms. And the GFS, it more so is. It's because that area of lower um, pressure is situated further east on the GFS. Uh, but then you start to get into, uh, you know, uh, Friday, which is a big severe weather day too. Um, but then you start to get a lot more energy scooting across the middle of the country, starting to get into the Midwest. You see that, you know, more so 60 to 70 knot mid-level jet. This is going to introduce the opportunity for a higher risk of thunderstorms. I think that the, if the Euro is correct, I think the bigger day could be Friday um, as far as Thursday and Friday. But, you know, the GFS might end up being right. And then on the Euro, you see another big system turn around and enter the picture and we could have a bigger severe weather threat for Saturday from another system. For And, and then we could turn around and have a th thunderstorms in, in, in the Great Lakes region and the Ohio Valley too, right here. So there's a lot going on. I think that enjoy the next few days for sure. Because, I mean, look at this. Look at this next system coming in. Enjoy, enjoy the next few days because it could get very active quick by the time we get in the end of next week for sure. You know, when we look at, you know, Wednesday afternoon, not a whole lot. Thursday afternoon off the Euro, I mean, not not a whole lot. It has thunderstorms way up here. And then we start to get into Friday afternoon. You know, th there's a lot of thunderstorms right in here with the surface low developing. And there's, there's kind of that Friday threat. And we kind of go back here and look. And, you know, Thursday's threat, Friday's threat. You know, I think Friday could be the bigger day. And, and sure enough, there's Friday. Now, this is for OZ Saturday, but this is you know for pretty much Friday evening. I mean that shows that shows that severe weather scenario right in here. And then we keep on going, and then like I said, you gotta watch Saturday down here in the Southern Plains. So I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. That's all I got, guys. Thank y'all for tuning in. I might have another video this evening. We'll see how it goes. Kind of just solely talking about this and seeing if models have come together. But that's all I got. God bless all y'all. Have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you again soon.